Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Vicious, and welcome to a brand new tutorial video. Today we're doing Photoshop again. This one's going to be different than normal. Instead of coming up front with a new technique or tip that I'm going to show you, instead I'm going to be showing you how I created something. I know other people have done tutorial videos and where they showed you how they created some kind of artwork, and sometimes you can learn a lot of great techniques from within that. Most of those I've seen are always done as a written tutorial, not a video. I think the video will give you a lot more information because now you can see how I achieve certain effects and also learn my workflow. Um, anyways, this is what I made. I made this the other day. It's just a joke. It's a little meme poster. I took the guy. We got two stocks here I use mainly. We got the uh, most interesting man in the world guy. And we got an old picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger with a cigar. These are the two that I wanted to put together for my main effect. And then I just you know tweaked it as I went. Now this is an inside joke for me and my friends, but you guys might get into it a little bit if you know about the Arnold quotes. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and open up the Photoshop file. And I'm not doing this live, I've already created it, so basically I'm going to go layer by layer and show you what I did for each layer and explain why I did that. We're going to start at the, the bottom here, we're going to turn everything off one piece at a time here. So about this kind of video, since I've never tried it before, if you guys want to key in and say if you found this useful and entertaining, and I should keep doing it when I create new pieces of artwork, or if you really didn't find much use in this kind of video, that way I know the best way to do it. All right, so the very first thing I did was I needed to uh, take Arnold, and I wanted just his head to place into this picture. And when it comes to extracting things, the way I always do that when I need a lot of fine detail or a lot of accuracy is with my pen tool. So what I did was I went ahead and I went in with a pen tool and I just I zoom in nice and far and I go all the way around. And I'm doing this very quickly obviously because it's a tutorial but I'm just giving you the idea of what I did. And once I got all the way around uh, what instead of uh, copying it, deleting it, ripping it out what I would do is I went ahead and created, go to my paths, make a selection, and I made that into a layer mask. And the reason I go with a layer mask is because we did not destroy the original image. If I ever had to go in here and tweak, like I want to feather this out a little bit, or I need to add or take away from this in any way, since it's just under a layer mask, we can do that. So that's the reason we went with a layer mask. And the first, the finished version of that one was this. All I did was I, like I said, went around the edges. And then I used the uh, transform tool to resize and reposition it as necessary to fit the best way I thought it would. And uh, so that's the very first part. You'll see that we have one big problem here. And that is, well, there's a couple big problems. The first one you might notice is that Arnold is in black and white. And the other guy is in color. So we have one really big decision to make. Are we going to make the whole picture black and white, or we're going to find a way to add color to Arnold's face. The second problem is, even though I place this in a position in the size that I think is appropriate for the image, you still have the hair and the ear and all that uh, coming through from the original image. So here's what I did with that. I went ahead and created a copy of the original background layer. I always like to keep one original untouched copy of my background. And with that copied layer, and we'll go ahead and create a new copied layer real quick. What I did was I went and took my clone tool, and I just went into my troubled areas that I knew I needed to get rid of, so the alt key to pick a source, and we just kind of clone in on the areas that we know were sticking out in a way. And using that clone tool, we just did that, and what we ended up with was this, once I got finished. And now when I place Arnold back on top, we have a pretty good cover here. And this is looking like it could fit on that image. And this is just a, a gag image for me and my friends. So I spent enough time on it to make it look presentable, but I didn't spend like a whole lot of time on it like I would a professional image for a website or something. Now back to what we were talking about. Are we going to make the whole thing black and white or make color on Arnold? And I decided for that the best thing to do was to add color because I want it to be like the original most interesting man in the world images. For that, I just simply went and took my eyedropper tool. And I just woke up, so I'm still 
crusty. Grabbed a color off of that that was skin flesh colored and I took a new layer and I went and colored in and it actually automatically gave me a clipping mask, I didn't want that. Create a new layer and I painted over Arnold's face and I don't have to be very specific about this because I'm going to show you why in one second. But we're going to paint in the color that we need. I could have even just filled the whole layer with this color if I really wanted to. And I'm going to change that to blending mode of color. And you can see that it kind of gives us a good, good color there. Black and white images, even though they don't have the color, still kind of have their alpha channel. And you can actually color them in pretty easily with that kind of method. And the reason I didn't have to be very exact about where I put that is I was just going to place it on top of the Arnold image and go to layer and create a clipping mask and it would snap it right into only the layer below it which is automatic because I already had a clipping mask in place here. So we'll trash that. I'll turn on the one I originally used which was this darker color. And so now, the next thing I noticed is that even though I have uh, masked out behind this, it doesn't fit exact because the original image had like a beard or whatnot going over this collar. And I can't just mask out that collar just as easy as I could have uh, recreated it. So what I did was I have a new layer. I sampled by colors again and I grabbed the color of the collar and I took a paintbrush and I basically just colored in the collar where I think it should be. To uh, And when I did that, I, um, I took more time with it, of course. But that helped put the neck underneath of the collar and made it look like it fit in the image. And we'll trash that layer and I'll show you the one I actually created. It was this. So you can see the before and after. It helps make that image come together. I basically cloned this up and drew that in. And the other thing is, I could not color match this exactly, so with this particular image it was much easier to go ahead and grab a clone tool, a new layer, and make sure you have it sampled to all layers. And I went ahead and I grabbed pieces of the original neck image and kind of cloned them in. And again, taking more time to do it originally. And I went and obviously masked it so that it fits perfectly. But when I did that, that made it fit like one piece of image. So the collar and now the neck. And as you can see, we're already really getting there now. We've got it looking presentable. The next thing I did was I noticed, well, since I have just one solid flesh color covering this entire thing, it doesn't give me desirable colors on certain things like the teeth. So for that, we create a new layer. And I went and just grabbed a, a white paintbrush. and a small brush, and I just kind of painted in white on the teeth to help whiten them up. And I went and I did a small blur just to kind of help uh, make it a little bit more realistic. And that was how I whitened up the teeth. So we'll trash that layer, and I'll show you the one I actually did was this one. And the next thing I needed as well was proper colors on the cigar. So I don't know exactly how they'll look when they burn, but I figured it would be like an orange and a red. So that's what I did. I took like a, an orange color. And I'm having trouble finding an orange color. And I basically kind of went in and painted orange and red. And again, I did a small blur on it just to kind of make it look a little bit more realistic. And that was all I did for the cigar. So I'll trash that layer and I'll show you the one I actually created was this one. It looks like I went with orange in the middle and red on the outside on my other one. And now we've got it looking like this so far, guys, bringing it together. Now back to color matching, what I did uh, here was make that one color, but the hand on the original image does not match. To color match that, I figured since they're already kind of close, all I really need to do is darken this up with a, a burn tool. And I just made a tutorial on this last week, this technique that I'm about to use. Create a, a new layer, 
and fill it shift and backspace is the shortcut with 50% gray and change that layer to soft light and that makes that layer transparent and now you can grab your dodge or burn tools and you can paint on that clear layer and actually bring that into your image so as I paint in here you can see that I'm darkening this hand up so I would use a much bigger brush and really start to paint in and darken this up and that's all I did was I darkened this hand up until it matched the uh, other skin tone that I used. So I'll go ahead and trash that layer and turn on the one I used for the project. As you can see it brings them a lot closer in color. And the next thing I wanted to do to add some realism to this was put some smoke. This is a, a lit cigar so I'd assume there'd be some kind of smoke coming from it. This is another cool technique. I'll create a blank layer. I'm going to go back to my brush. And what you want to do here is use white, black, and gray and kind of just draw in little squiggly lines in the direction or the size that you think that the smoke should be. So we've got white lines, we've got black lines, and throw some gray in there as well. And then you grab your smudge tool and you just smudge these really, really good and you can really start to get some pretty decent looking smoke. Just play with the uh, strength and size of your tool, the, uh, your lines, you play with all of that until you get something that you like. And you can get a lot of power with that smudge tool. Just depends on how far you want to go with it. And um, once I did that, I went ahead and again, I, I did a small blur on this to even make it a little bit more smoke-like. And I dropped the opacity a little bit. And on my original project, I created two layers like that. I actually created one layer and then I duplicated it and erased it a little bit and overlaid it on top of each other and I got this effect. So that was my smoke and how I did the smoke. After that, I went ahead and smacked my watermark on there just in case, uh, you know, whatever. So I wants to redistribute the photo without my permission. Sometimes you want to do that. I uh, thought it looked like he's holding something. I was going for maybe wanting to add a gun or not, but I decided not to in the final image, but <laughs> I was just toying around with the idea. This wasn't final. It's definitely, he's starting to look more like the uh, something from the Mafia <laughs> rather than the most interesting man in the world. And then for my quotes, I just simply took text and uh, put a black stroke on there. And that was pretty much how I did this. And that was the image, guys. So. Now, like I said, critique on this. Leave me a comment in the video that said if you found this was useful. Let me know if I need to slow down or speed up on these creation of the layers in my workflow. And, you know, we'll figure out if I'm going to do more of these videos in the future or not. Hope you guys found it entertaining. This was Vicious, and I'll see you guys next time.